So the arachne guide begins. Step one on arachne. Run, 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 run. Really fast. You got to go really, really fast because you got to get your webs first. That is your third ability. And you got to go get them out on the board. You want to get two webs over on the blue button at the start and have your solo lane start over on the blue. You wanna to try to put down your webs so that they will hit the little harpies. So you wanna proc it preferably on the left side, uh, or excuse me, on the little camp, uh, the little minion, and on the right side on the little minion. If you put them on the big minion, it can actually screw up and you cannot get credit for the little guys and you need to get credit for the little guys. So do one a little bit more to the left, do one a little bit more to the right and you, you will spawn your spideys right on top of that. Now, there we got that gun. You can have three webs out at the same time, guys. You can have three on the map. Uh, if you cast a fourth one, it will start to get rid of your previous webs, starting with the first one. Your web is a four seconds uh, duration slow. It increases your movement speed by 40%. Uh, when it attaches to somebody, it leaves a web trail behind them. That's where you get that bonus movement speed from. You can see as I start to move this uh, little speed buff this way. It also summons two little broodlings that do damage. As you rank up the three, the damage will increase on that. And with Aragni, you are basically always looking to do this start. Speed buff right there. You have your two webs of blue. The reason why you do that is because you get a really, really early level two, which allows you to go and put this pressure on the mid lane. You either get a kill here or you run over and you steal the red buff. Either way, that's a big fat win. After this, we're gonna do a little loop-de-loop -loop in the jungle, right to the oracles, from the oracles to the red buff, boom, boom. Try to maximize all of this farm. So at level two, you're gonna go ahead and get your one. Your one is your main ability on Arachne. This is what you will be leveling to max first. This ability is called Venomous Bite. It does bonus damage when you hit a target. Not only does it do bonus damage when you hit a target, but it is also a bleed on that target. And it gives you healing. So it is uh, a heal over time, it is damage over time, and it's also an initial damage burst. It is all three of those things at the same time. This is the ability that we will max out to first. At level three, you have the option you can either get a second point in your one or you can get your two i like to get my two just in case i need it you never know when a fight's gonna break out but if you're positive that you're just gonna be farming in the jungle you can feel free to get a second point in your one what does our two do our two go ahead and increases our attack speed and if we get three auto attacks on the same target it will stun them as well. So it basically buffs your next three autos. Those next three autos have increased attack speed upwards of 30 to 70%, depending on the level. And it's a stun that also scales with the level. You have to land all three of those increased attack speed autos on the same target in order for it to stun. So in that case right there, I landed one on Nemesis and then two on Morrigan. No stun on Morrigan. It had to be all three on Morrigan or it's a no-go. Uh, for Arachne's passive, a little bit more simple, uh, just straight up, Arachne's basic attacks gain 1.5% physical damage for every 5% of a target's missing health. So basically, the lower the HP of the target that you're fighting, the more uh, damage that you're going to be uh, doing to them, so you're really good at picking off low HP targets. As far as our build that we kind of had to uh, skip over at the start because we had to run to the blue buff so fast, we've got the standard Assassin's Blessing going into Golden Blade on all of your auto attack junglers. You're going to be going into the Golden Blade now. Uh, even on some of your ability junglers, you're probably going to be going into Golden Blade because it's so good. The second you can buy Golden Blade, back to buy Golden Blade. Don't wait. The second I clear this camp, I am backing up to get it. My farm is going to go up 
the wazoo is going to be so much better. I can also grab a couple of wards on that back. Now at level five, we have grabbed our ulti. I like to rank up my ulti every single time with Arachne. So level nine, 13, 17, etc. Every time that you can get it, uh, that is because it lowers the cooldown on this ability, which allows you to play more aggressive. Arachne ultimate does basically makes you intargetable. It throws you up into the air. Um, you can be hit when you're when you're in that state. And at the very end, you hop down. You will do damage in a small targeter around you, and you will create a large area of webs. On those webs, it works just like your three. You will have increased movement speed on those webs, and your enemies will have decreased movement speed. It is a pretty good offensive ability uh, if you get the opportunity to use it that way because of the big movement speed change, but most of the time, you end up using it defensively. It's your major getaway skill. Uh, you don't have really anything else to help you uh, get away outside of your ulti. You can use your three as a getaway skill. I'll show you here just in one second. I'm going to see if I can get a little pressure on Nem here. Get the stun off. I'm going to switch over to steal the speed. He's got the creepies on him. I'm going to stay in this fight because I'm Arachne. I can pop the ulti just like this and start to run away. In fact, do I even have to keep running away? I don't think so. I'm going to get a little greedy here. I'm going to stop and get myself that one. I'm so greedy! He's missing. He's missing. I'm greedy. I'm going to heal off the totem really quick. Just pop my one. Go ahead and throw down on the totem. It doesn't have to be a real life target for you to heal off of it. Bada bing, bada boom. We have gotten away. So you can see right there something that I wanted to show you, which is that you can actually use webs as a getaway ability. Um, where you launch your webs uh, will bring out the actual tracking on the floor so you get the bonus movement speed. So if I throw my webs like this, I can actually do this to quickly get that bonus movement speed. Um, it also leaves that trail behind you, uh, which is that slow. So if you need to get away and you don't have your ultimate up, the three is a great option because it gives you the bonus movement speed. And if somebody's chasing directly behind you, it will also slow them, helping you to get out of harm's way. But the ulti is going to always be your uh, your top tier getaway ability just because you're literally invulnerable uh, for five seconds in the air. You can't be hit by anything. Uh, things like bleeds will still tick on you. So if you have some sort of bleed on you, uh, you can die up in the air. Keep that in mind. Uh, but nothing, nothing new can hit you while you're up there. You'll be, you'll be safe from that. Got to be a little careful here with this Hachi. He's got a whole lot of creeps. And even though I've got Golden Blade, it's uh, not going to matter. Second up on Arachne. I'm a big fan of the Hasten Katana on Arachne. I think the combination of Hasten, Katana, um, and Golden Blade with your webs gives you so much, so much movement speed. So that's the way that I like to go Arachne. I standardly do not buy boots. I tend to go into the uh, sword tree, Golden Blade, Hasten, then a stone cutting sword. I find that that is plenty of movement speed. Plus it saves you some money for the end of the game. You can just buy um poots without having to even deal with ever selling your boots gank. try to rotate right back over a gank that's left lane your combo on arachne is step one land your three so you get that nice little trail on your opponent step two pop your one and your two bada bing bada boom you get the kill just like that i like to save my point on arachne at level eight so i can level up my one and my ultimate at level nine get those as high leveled as possible Okay. Um, so for your standard Arachne combo, you're using your three first on the target. That's going to help you close the gap because of that movement speed change. After you close the gap, you pop your one and your two. You can have those both going at the same time. I'm going to wait for that Kuzumbo to go ahead and get that kill, and then I'm going to get out of here. You can also use Arachne ult, kind of like the way that you use Apollo ult, which is to just be scary in the air. You can just kind of sit around, try to make them worried about whether or not you're going to go in. I think this Hachi might look for his purple. No, he's actually going to come over here, though. Uh, so, yeah, keep that in mind. Your one and your two will pop at the same time. You also don't have to land 
all of your auto attacks directly in a row on your two. So you have to land three auto attacks on the same person um, with, with your bonus effects, but there's not a super quick time frame on it. It's six seconds. So if I'm attacking the Hachi with Arachne and I get two autos and then he dashes, that's okay. I can still just walk up to him and hit him with that third auto. And as long as like five seconds hasn't passed, um, I'll still get the stun on him with the two. Arachne's passive is interesting. If you look at it, it's 1.5% physical damage um, for every 5% of targets missing health. So it's not physical power. Um, physical power is still good on Arachne. Sometimes you see a little bit more uh, power hungry builds uh, like Blood Forge. I actually do like that on Arachne. You're not going to be going like a transcendence, anything up that line, but I don't mind some bigger, bigger power items. Uh, but just know that your passive is physical damage for every one, for every 5% uh, and not physical power. So you're not restricted uh, into going only big fat power items. On Arachne, standardly, you're gonna get the Golden Blade Hastened. After these two items, you get some more options. Um, I like the Stone Cutting Sword. After the Stone Cutting Sword, you really, really have a lot of options. Uh, at the end of the game, you'll probably end up getting a Mantle of Discord. That way you can be a little bit more aggressive without getting punished super hard. Uh, a lot of people like to go Kins on Arachne because of the combination with her Cocoon. Uh, you get that extra attack speed on your two. You quickly get a bunch of kin procs. That's quite nice. I don't always get Kins on Arachne. I don't like it quite as much as the general community does. And it, I think it's a good item on her, but I don't think it's a mandatory item on Arachne, uh, which is really the difference. Webs are also a great tool to use as vision and uh, avoiding uh, trying to keep people uh, zoned out. So what you can do, because you can have three webs up, they're a great, uh, they're a great ability right here. You can see I totally blocked off a path for them to walk in. Enemy missing right. I totally stopped them from being able to walk in that way because if they walked in that way, they would proc my to the rest. my spiders. And your spiders do uh, your spider slash web uh, do give you vision. So I would I would have known that they were there. Can't uh, can't be sneaky and run away from me. This is an opportunity where I want to use this aggressive, except for I don't even actually need to. You can see my little Spideys just sat there and killed him right there. Let's go, Spideys! Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Another thing about spiders is that they see um, stealth. Your spiders are very good against stealth characters uh, because the spiders do not have any problem seeing through stealth. And it also leaves that um, that stealthing track behind them uh, as well. So Arachne, one of the better anti-stealth gods in the game. So very good against Morrigan, uh, good against Loki. Uh, they've got that heat-seeking vision. So it's a great counter god into stuff like that. Also... Arachne being picked a lot as a counter to all of the to all of those people out there complaining about how broken Cthulhu is. Arachne actually being picked a lot into Cthulhu because Arachne is so standardly built with Kins and Kins does so well against Cthulhu. A lot of people are building, a lot of people are building uh, auto attack junglers uh, because of the Kins into the Cthulhu to take advantage of proccing extra damage off of the health that he gets in his ultimate. Another tip here with Arachne is you can set up your spiders around objectives. This specifically goes for the Pyromancer and the Gold Fury. This will not work on the Fire Giant because the Fire Giant does not move. But you can set down webs like I just did right there. I like to do this on Arachne. You set down two webs. You let those webs get ready and wait for your third web to come up. And then when I start that Pyromancer, I can make sure that I've got a bunch of Spideys there to help me out. Golden Blade, also very good against stealthing gods. Uh, just a little Golden Blade fact for you. 
because Golden Blade has that AoE damage, if a god like Morrigan, de Morrigan decoys and I hit her decoy really quick, it will actually knock her out of stealth. So here's what I can do. It's a little bit less efficient against the Pyro because he has an AoE auto. It's more efficient against the gold, but you can let the spiders tank the objectives for you. Just sit right outside of the objective range for as long as you can, and your spiders will go ahead and tank the entire objective for you. Like I said, this works with Pyromancer and the Gold Fury. It does not work with the Fire Giant because the Fire Giant doesn't move, which means there's no way uh, for you to proc those spiders against the Fire Giant without launching them directly at him at the start. But yes, your spiders will tank it for you. You do not lose aggro. Uh, you do not lose aggro on the objective that you're tanking as long as your little spideys have hit it at least once. Just make sure you're back in the range for when they all die to make sure that the objective doesn't reset as you're getting close to finishing it. So now that I've got Golden Blade, Hasten, and Stone Cutting, I've got well above normal movement speed not even factoring in my three yet. So I'm gonna start working on a Kins just for that bonus damage. And cause it's an item you're gonna build most of the time on Arachne. I'm also a huge fan of Bloodforge on Arachne. I like Bloodforge on uh, pretty much any God that uh, has a hard time escaping from fights because it lets you go in, get that shield proc, and if you factor in your movement speed plus the bonus uh, movement speed that you get from the Blood Forge proc, you will uh, have a much better chance at getting away, especially if you throw down your webs as a getaway skill. Spiders will tank, um, will tank towers. So you should know that. Spiders do not give backdoor protections. Um, so don't be trying to, you know, do any crazy, overwhelming uh, split push nonsense. Uh, you can use them though to tank the 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 towers for you, uh, barely. So the way you would do that, the way you would do that is, if there's a wave of creeps coming out from the enemy, um, and your wave of creeps is going up towards the tower. Go ahead, throw down your spiders right before your creeps are going to go into the tower. That'll summon your two spideys, and it'll put them closer to the tower than your minions are. And that will go ahead and make sure that the tower prioritizes your spiders over the minions. The reason why you want the tower to prioritize um, your spiders over the minions is because your spiders will provide you with uh, no backdoor protections, but your minions will provide you with backdoor protections. So go ahead and utilize them in that fashion. The longer you keep those minions alive, the better chance you have of slaying uh, that tower. Look how good Arachne is at doing objectives by herself. I mean, I guess not by herself. She's got her babies, of course, to help out with her so much, but she's so good at it as long as as long as you get those spiders set up properly. She can just walk around and do them so easy peasy. As with anybody that buys Golden Blade, you are extremely good at farming both the jungle camps and the lane. So make sure that you are keeping yourself absolutely prioritized into the farm. If you're gonna build the Golden Blade, utilize it to make sure that you are maximizing your farming efficiency. Although it's a little bit less so required for you to do that. Golden Blade is just such a stat efficient item now. You can pretty much buy it on anybody in any situation. It's even starting to pop Enemies up uh, in the solo lane on gods like Horus and stuff. Um, so, you know, expect that in your game. It's just a little side thing. Woo. Arachne spiders, uh, the web will follow through jumps. So like if I had put that three on Nike before she jumped, I still would have had plenty uh, of web to go ahead and chase her down uh, with it. So don't be worried about uh, necessarily saving your web. I'm gonna start working on a blood forge now. Uh, with that Blood Forge proc, where the heck is my items? With that Blood Forge proc, not only do you get the shield, people kind of forget about that 10% movement speed buff. That 10% movement speed buff is a big deal when you've already got more movement speed uh, than the rest of the enemy team. 
it just basically overwhelms them and then you throw down the three on top of that and oh my gosh look at you you're going through another great utilization of arachne three is to put it um and use it as a ward so here's an example of something you could do with arachne three i could throw this down right in front of his speed buff and that way uh if he came over to do actually slightly misplaced that one uh but if you put it slightly out in front of it like if i didn't know when it spawned you could have it there and so then when he goes to do his speed buff he has no choice but to run through your spiders and so you can know that they are over on their speed buff and it can also give you an idea of when uh the next timer is going to be for that as well coincidentally it happened to spawn right then <laughs> coincidentally keep using that ulti to get away from your troubles like i said you really won't use arachne ultimate aggressively that often uh maybe to get pickoffs at the end of a fight almost like apollo ulti actually where like a lot of the times you're just using it to get that last little oomph at the end of a fight you know chase down that last person Ooh, that nem shield though she actually almost lived from that that was a really good nem shield i'm gonna run right through this ganesha i don't even care i'm so fast and because i cannot be slowed on my woo, gotta watch out i'm popping beads preemptively there's a morgan and stealth i don't want to get one shot while my uh while my ulti is down um i forgot to mention you are actually uh immune to slows on this uh three so you can also utilize it as a um Attack fire you can also utilize it as like a like a slow immune uh as well you are you are a speedy a speedy speedy gal on your three it's basically hebo carpet for all intents and purposes it's spider spider hebo carpet you know spidey hebo carpet this is actually risky of us to do this arachne is very good at doing the objective um her little spiders will not summon extra magma pools. Back in the day, pets used to actually summon magma pools. Um, and so you had to very specifically make sure your spiders weren't up for the magma pool section. This is super unfortunate. They actually might continue to do this. They are. Okay. I'm just gonna run down this guy. Also, your spiders do go ahead and body block. So when you're fighting a hunter or something, especially in this crit meta, it's so nice. Make sure you land those spideys. If you miss your spideys, you're basically taking two, three, four autos that your spideys will take for you and then taking them to your own dome. Uh, so make sure you don't, you don't miss the three. A lot and a lot and a lot of uses of Arachne 3. Absolutely her most versatile ability. The 1 and the 2 are pretty straightforward, you know. You use your 1 to clear camps faster, to kill a god faster. You use your 2 to, to burn an objective faster, right? You can't stun a gold theory, but you can go ahead and throw down your 2 on a fire giant to get the extra attack speed to try to burst it down. Uh, Arachne's webs is really where you get to do some some shining without plays in skill level in utilizing for multiple purposes now that i've got the web on this guy you can see right through his stealth like i mentioned earlier thank you morgan for a great example of how it looks when you have arachne spiders on you so you get to see right on through that which is wonderful here's my one to go heal up in the old jangle and i'm gonna go shove mid lane um, by nature of the build that we're running, this kind of attack speed power build, not only do we burn down gold, fury, and fire giant and all that pretty fast, we also burn down towers pretty fast as well. No opportunity there to use my spiders. I'm going to use my two to try to burn this chaos tower down faster. Do be careful. Here's a little golden blade uh, fun fact side note for you. Um, let's see if I can't get over this red buff in time. Um, I can. Oh, I should probably mention when you're in the air in Arachneal, you can pop your one and your two to have them ready when you land. Um, if you so desire, you can pop those up in the air. That's probably an important mechanic I should mention. Uh, you won't use this 
super often because you're not using Arachne all aggressively super often. But you can see right there, even defensively, I, I use my Arachne ult defensively in the air. I pop my one so I could land on the red buff and then immediately start healing the second that I landed uh, off of that red buff. So you can pop your one and your two and have them, um, you can have them prepped and ready uh, for when you land, kind of like the way that Ao Kuang can pop his two while in stealth and not get brought out of stealth. Uh, same kind of concept there. You can have you, you can have your uh, your your hands up and ready for action. But that's only you know, that's only if you're using it aggressively uh, for the most part, and you're probably going to be using it defensively. So, not a huge deal here. We've got the Blood Forge online, which is wonderful. I'm gonna go look for this Morgan in the back. I can see her in stealth. I'm just gonna go for him, try to burn him down. He's gonna die walking through that. It should give me the Blood Forge proc. Now I'm gonna come down and land on Hachi. I'm gonna pop a preemptive beads here. Get that Blood Forge proc on Hachi. You can see why we like the Blood Forge, don't you folks? Let's go back and do the Fire Giant. And this is why we like Blood Forge on Arachne. You get to go ahead and combine the healing on your one. You get the shield from the Blood Forge. We do so much damage with our Kins and our Stone Cutting Sword. And at the end, we're going to finish up with that Mantle of Discord. Like we mentioned at the beginning, we do not actually have any boots. So we don't have to sell boots to buy an item. You can still buy the Elixir of Speed. Poots, as I call them. Potion boots. You can still buy it. And you get the bonus movement speed. Um, so don't forget to buy that, even when you're not buying boots on the guy that you're playing. And at the very end of the game on Arachne and on all auto attack junglers, if you want to sell, if you want to sell Golden Blade, you can, but you do not have to, okay? You can sell Golden Blade at the end if you feel like there's going to be a better item for you to buy. Oopa, get in the air and let's get out of this. pop my one in the air so I can walk right over here and start healing up as soon as possible. I like oftentimes to keep the golden blade just to have the uh, the AoE clear potential. Uh, but you might find that you need another defensive item. Oh, we need to get out of here. I'm gonna use my webs right here. Speed me right on out. Plus it's gonna put that little web deterrent. That master run right through my webs in order to come get to me. I can stun her. That's a good shell. I need this blood forge proc. I'm gonna get it. I need another one. I'm gonna get it. I need to body block some autos. I've got some spideys body blocking the autos for me. Bada bing, bada boom. That's how you get an arachne triple kill in a very tough and scary situation. At the end of the game, I don't really like to have speed buff anymore. I find that I don't need it. So at the end of the game, please feel free to steal the enemy red. Don't take your mid laners red. They obviously need it, uh, especially when it's somebody like a Gooby. But uh, utilize that extra bonus damage. You don't need the movement speed, particularly on gods like Arachne. Uh, because of so much built-in movement speed. So just go ahead, get yourself that, uh, get yourself that enemy red buff. Don't take your own. Gonna back it up, finish that mantle of discord, which is gonna give us some great peel. Give me an elixir of speed, rank up the beads, rank up the blink, grab a sentry ward and a potion of power. Don't pop your potions of power right away. Wait at least until you're in your jungle, even if you're concerned about getting attacked. Just let that potion last a little bit longer for you. Try to maximize that potion duration. I'm gonna pop tanks. it right here as I'm going over towards the portal. I'm gonna do this portal while we're just waiting and then head immediately over to the left lane. I'm gonna let my little spideys tank for me. Head back in the range right there at the end. Just make sure I'm always at full HP if I need it. At the end of the game, you are looking for pickoffs, pickoffs, pickoffs on Arachne. That is what we are looking for. I just won't quite be able to reach him. That was a greedy ulti from me. I probably shouldn't have done that. 
that the, those are the types of plays that to come back to haunt you on arachne because now you try to go get out and then you end up having your ultimate down and you end up being a really bad spot for the most part i would avoid doing that i thought i might be able to catch up to him but he was a he was a speedy little horse arachne as well does very good against tanks if you're gonna build that kins do not feel any intimidation uh fighting somebody full tank please feel free to attack them obviously as an assassin your main goal in team fights is to eliminate a squishy so on arachne i'm always looking to kill the adc the mage whatever is more important at the time but if there's gonna have a frontliner run right at you man you do not need to be intimidated you are arachne you've got the kins on arachne things like preemptive beadsing is super important so make sure you're always listening uh for sound effects to make sure you can preemptively beads if you need to get yourself a nice little movement speed build and look at that folks that's how you go ahead and grind out that arachne easy peasy lemon squeezy oh last thing i forgot to mention because something came up uh that golden blade on the tower if you're attacking a tower with golden blade and a god gets an enemy god gets really close to the tower you will hit the enemy god and aggro the tower so just keep that in mind on anybody uh that you're buying golden blade on you can pull aggro on yourself punching the tower and golden blade proccing out just keep that in mind and that's an arachne guide, folks. Just like that. 37k damage. <laughs>